What's up everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to make some salmon cakes. I've been getting a lot of requests for some fish and seafood recipes. Well, here's one coming right at you. Are you ready to do this? Let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the salmon first. We're gonna use wild Alaskan sockeye salmon. Now I got this from Costco. Uh, this is roughly about three pounds. It was about $25, but salmon is one of those high quality proteins that you just don't wanna, you know, um, cheap out on. It's gonna be packed with vitamins and minerals. It's high in potassium, selenium. It's packed with a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. Those are those polyunsaturated fats that are good for you. Not that saturated fat stuff, but the good polys. All right, so poly good, saturated bad. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the salmon. Put it in the oven on 350 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. We wanna fully cook it, and then we can start assembling the rest of our other ingredients. Now, if you didn't wanna cook all three pounds at once, these do come individually wrapped, so you don't have to use all of them. They're easily storable, but I love these from Costco. So I decided to use two pounds of salmon, so that's roughly about four fillets. Now I'm gonna add a lot of other ingredients to it, so it's gonna give a lot of body to it, but let's go ahead and get these in the oven, because it's hot in this kitchen with the oven going. Go ahead and brush the salmon with one tablespoon of olive oil. Salmon is skin side down. So I wound up only using a half a tablespoon of that olive oil. All right, let's go ahead and put this in the oven and uh, let's get everything else a going, folks. So a little story. So I used to eat salmon growing up, like my parents made it all the time. Then I got pregnant and then uh, I couldn't eat it anymore. I couldn't stand the smell of it. I didn't want to taste it, nothing. And that lasted for about 15 years. I just started eating salmon probably like about six months ago. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Do you guys have any things like that that you once ate and then all of a sudden you couldn't eat them anymore and then you know after a while you tried them again? Let me know down in the comments. Am I the only like odd one or am I not alone here? Folks, help me out. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the rest of the ingredients. All right, so the salmon's in the oven. Like I said, it's gonna cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. When I take the salmon out, I'm gonna let it rest and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it get cold, okay? When I start assembling all the ingredients, I want the salmon to be cool, not warm or hot. Same thing with the vegetables I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using some celery, red bell pepper, and red onion. We're gonna saute these for about two to three minutes on the stove, and then we're gonna set them aside and let them cool as well. And then we can go ahead and start making the binding for the salmon cake. So this is two and a half celery stalks. Now you could do this in the food processor to get it really fine. I like a little bit of crunch in my salmon cakes. Same way when I make my crab cakes, I like a little crunch. I don't want everything to be so mushy. All right, so there's two ways that you could do this salmon recipe. Now, I'm choosing to fully cook my salmon in the oven first and let it cool, and then assemble all the ingredients. Now, if you wanna do it with the raw salmon, you could put it in a food processor, pulsate it, and then put your ingredients in there as well, and then blend it all up. And then you'll be have like, more like a patty style, like a hamburger style salmon cake. Mine, I want mine a little bit more like a crab cake, so that when you bite into it, it's kind of flaky. The salmon is kind of like whole chunks. It's gonna be, I think, both are good. I just prefer this way, all right? So uh, enough stalling, time to chop this uh, celery. And uh, don't play with knives, keep them pointed down. All right, so let's go ahead and add one tablespoon of olive oil to the pan. Let that get warm for a little bit. All right, go ahead and add the vegetables. And we're just 
going to saute those for about two to three minutes. The timer went off and it's time to get the salmon out the oven. Wait a minute, this is hot. Let's uh, open this up and let's do this differently. All right, so you know your salmon is done when it flakes apart easily, just like that. So we're gonna let this cool and then we're gonna take it all off the skin. We don't want the skin part. So that can just rest for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator. All right, so it's been about two to three minutes. Let's go ahead and take them off. They've got a nice little uh, saute on them, a little, a little caramelization, a little char. Does that look good? All right, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes along with the fish, and I'll be back in a splash. So the salmon is in the refrigerator. It's been cooling for about 10 minutes, and so are the uh, sauteed vegetables. In the meantime, let's go ahead and prepare a little side dish of some zucchini and red onions. I want to saute that on the stove. That way we have a little bit more vegetables. Get those micronutrients in. All right, let's go ahead and cut this up. All right, let's take this to the stove, saute it with about a tablespoon of olive oil and add some seasonings to it. Let's go. So I went ahead and added a half a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a half a teaspoon of onion powder for right now. And I'm also gonna add a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. All right, so the zucchini is done. I have the salmon from the refrigerator right here. I've already pulled off all the skin, so there is no skin on the bottom of that. So I'm gonna use about one fourth cup of chopped parsley. If you wanted to use dry herbs, you could use about one tablespoon of parsley that's dry. All right. Anytime you add fresh herbs to your meal, you definitely increase the flavor profile. You won't need as much salt when you start adding all these different seasonings and fresh herbs and citrus and natural sugars. Really, you don't need a lot of salt. All right, let's put this in this pan right here. And that should be all the dicing that we need to do. Let's go ahead and flake this salmon up. Now, these should be fillets. You shouldn't really see any bones in there, but you never know, so just be careful. You could use canned salmon too, and sometimes canned salmon, they're, they're in there. But it's just gonna flake off just like this. Just take your fork and pull it apart. See, found a bone. Now that won't be good when you're trying to bite into your uh, salmon cake. I remember one time as a kid, I choked on a bone and I thought I was nearly gonna die. I couldn't get it out my throat. It's time to get a little up close and personal with the fish. So be careful, run your fingers down. There's another one. And so even though I broke it up like that, when I go ahead and put it in the bowl, I'm still going to kind of feel my way through it and make sure I don't find any other bones. Like that one. Now I don't want to, you know, mangle the, the fish too much. I'm going to keep it, try to keep it as whole as possible, but I, I'm not choking on a bone. So take your time and go through it. All right, so I went through all the salmon. I got all, all the bones, and there was about seven or eight, you know, good-sized bones and the little ones as well. So take your time and go through it if you're gonna use fresh salmon like I'm using. Um, but it came out pretty good, right? So you wanna take your time and see, it's still pretty thick in its consistency, so that way, you know, you're, it's not like the mush, it's more like a, so it's gonna be more like lump crab cake. Have you ever gotten like a Maryland style lump crab cake where you bite into it and it's just big chunks of crab meat? Well, that's the same thing I want for this, for the salmon cake. I wanna bite in and I wanna get big chunks of salmon. I don't wanna get like little, like in the food processor pieces. 
All right, I'm gonna look through this one more time because I saw one or two bones, like I said. Take your time and do it right. All right, I think I pretty much got all the bones. Just a couple stragglers in there. Go ahead and mix a little bit of that parsley on up in there as well. Now we have the sauteed bell peppers, onions, and celery. We'll add a little bit now, and depending on how thick it is, we'll add a little bit more later. Now adding the vegetables also does keep it very moist because you are gonna add breadcrumbs to it. There's nothing worse than biting into a salmon cake or a crab cake and then it being dry. So the vegetables are gonna help really keep it moist. Just like when I do a turkey burger, I'm always adding peppers and onions. Why? Because it's gonna help moisten that meat, which is typically dry. All right, I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the peppers and onions. I don't think I have enough in there. Again, I'm just loosely folding it in, I'm not really stirring it too hard. Put this to the side. We're going to use two eggs. All right, let's go ahead and beat those eggs. Let's go ahead and add one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Two teaspoons of Old Bay seasoning, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, and a half a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt. And I'm going to add the juice of one lemon. We'll mix that up and you can pour that right on in. Just get a spoon and just fold that in. You want to evenly distribute that. Now the eggs are going to help bind it together. Now I have one cup of Japanese whole wheat breadcrumbs. So I'm using this brand right here. So one cup of Japanese whole wheat breadcrumbs. But we're not going to pour it all in at one time because we may not need it. Remember, before I was going to do three pounds, but I decided to only do two pounds. So let's just go a little bit at a time. About a half a cup left. Alright, so I didn't use the full cup. I still have almost a half a cup there. So it's a little more than, say, almost like a third. All right, so let's go ahead and make these into patties. And then what you wanna do is you wanna sit it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes so they can kind of firm up. Because I'm not using a lot of like high fats. Some recipes I've seen calls for mayo, but I chose to omit that because I'm gonna actually use my mayo or mayonnaise for a dip later on. I'll show you that too. But let's go ahead and form these into patties, put them in the refrigerator, let them sit for a little while, and then we'll come back and we'll put them on the stove and like sear them for like two to three minutes on each side. Really just want to cook that egg through. So I'm gonna keep making these patties and I'll be back in about 30 minutes. All right y'all, it's been 30 minutes. The salmon is still in the refrigerator, it's still chilling. While that's in there, let's go ahead and make the sauce. I'm going to use a half a cup of light mayonnaise. We're going to use about a half a tablespoon of sriracha sauce and the juice of one lime and the juice of one lemon. This is a lemon. Citrus is really good anytime you have fish. That's why anytime you get served like fish or seafood, they always give you like a lemon or a lime to squeeze on top. It really just brings out that flavor. All right, let's get to mixing. Now for the sriracha, like I said, I'm using a half a tablespoon, but if you want yours a little bit more spicy, you could add a full tablespoon. And you know, cooking is nothing more than trial and error. You know, you, you as you, whew, 
That's juicy. As you go ahead and cook, if you taste something and you're like, oh, well, it could use just a little bit more of that, then go ahead and add it. Let's go ahead and just stir that up. All right, let's uh, taste it and see if it needs anything else. Yes, my hands are clean or my fingers clean. Mm, nope, perfect. That is gonna be delicious on those salmon cakes. Let's go ahead and get those out of the refrigerator and into the pan and sear them up and it's time to uh, eat one. I'm getting hungry. Well, it's actually 11.41 at night so I'm gonna eat one or take a bite and share it with the rest of the people in the house because it's too late for me to eat. But for all intents and purposes, I ate a full one. So as you can see, I went and took some saran wrap and wrapped them up. That way they will keep their form better. But I wanted to make sure that they really got a chance to sit in the refrigerator and bind together. I did wind up adding an additional egg um, just to make sure that they were stuck together good. But I didn't want to put a lot of breadcrumbs. So let's go ahead and put these in the stove. I already have the cast iron preheating. I'm gonna put two tablespoons of olive oil in there and then sear these up. And I'm using the same pan from before when I sauteed the peppers and onions, so no need to clean it out. And that's what you wanna hear, a nice sizzle. You don't wanna put it in a cold pan because you wanna get that nice, good caramelization on it. All right, so these are in the pan. They're gonna cook for about two to three minutes on one side. Then I'll flip them, let them cook for another two to three minutes. Take them off, finish the last batch, and then go ahead and wrap up this uh, meal prep and uh, see what it all tastes like together. All right, see you in a couple minutes. All right, guys, I'm all done. All the salmon cakes are done. They came out delicious. I actually made eight. Somehow one managed to escape. I don't know where it went. But um, this is what we're working with right here. I've got the zucchini as well. Go ahead and put some of that on the plate. So very simple. It was just salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic. Just a half a teaspoon of each for one very large zucchini and a very small onion. Let's go ahead and add one of those uh, salmon cakes, salmon croquets, whatever you wanna call them. I don't care, I'm just ready to eat it. All right, and uh, I have my sriracha mayo right here. Let's go ahead and add a little dollop of douya. All right, folks, I'm gonna keep it real. It's uh, 12, 11 at night. It's taking me a few hours to cook this only because I'm stopping filming, you know, I'm getting, you know, those good shots for you, hopefully. Um, typically, this will take me about 30 minutes to prep and about 30 minutes to cook, not including the time that I let it sit in the refrigerator and cool, which is about 40 minutes. So in all in all, it'll be about a total of two hours. But uh, that's enough talking, I'm ready to dig in. Evenly spread that out. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just like, it's filled with, Look at all that. That's really but good. For someone who didn't like salmon, 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 whatever you wanna call it, six months ago, had it eaten in 15 years, I could eat this day in and day out. Well, I'm not going to, I'm gonna eat it for the next two to three days, but I'm just saying it's that darn good. Veggies, gotta get your micronutrients. That's gonna conclude the video for right here. I hope that you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Go ahead, hit that like button, smash it. It really does help me out. It really helps the channel grow. If you have any questions or you wanna leave some comments below, please do so. I do answer every one of them. And uh, if you're not subscribed, why not? I post recipes like this all the time. I'm posting workout videos. Hey, I'm giving you my all. Go ahead and subscribe and join the fam. All right guys, there's nothing left but to stay focused, stay positive, and keep it moving. I'll see you in the next one. Good day, everybody. Hey, Michael, can you eat some of this, please?
<laughs> just wait for that. Told you. He eats anything. See you later, folks. <laughs>